Hi there. I'm Yelena Dietrich-Holz, and I will tell you about my work on health penetration for near-optimal and parameter free monotone inclusion and strong solutions to variational inequalities. The main motivation for this work are index concave min-max optimization problems, also known as saddle point optimization problems, as shown on the slide. There are many different applications of such problems, such as in game theory, engineering, mathematical programming, and so on. Within machine learning, we most frequently use them to model adversarial training. The way we study these problems is through a further abstraction known as the monotone inclusion. Monotone inclusion is defined with respect to monotone operators. These are maps from RD to RD that satisfy this inequality we see on the slide for all x and y. In particular, for our motivating min-max optimization problems, we can construct a monotone operator by stacking on top of each other the gradient with respect to the convex part of this function lowercase f and the negative gradient with respect to the concave part of the same function. Now our new vector of variables u would be constructed by stacking on top of each other these vectors x and y. This newly constructed uh, operator, capital F of u, is well known to be monotone. In this case, our feasible set would be the product between the feasible sets for x and y. The monotone inclusion consists in finding a point u star such that the zero vector belongs to f of u star plus the subdifferential set of the indicator function of this uh, feasible set u. The subdifferential set is just the set of all subgradients, and this allow us, allows us to talk about this problem even in the constrained setups. If this is confusing, just note that in the unconstrained setups, this problem boils down to finding a zero of this operator f. Or in other words, if you go back to our min-max optimization problem, it consists in finding a point with a zero gradient, also known as a stationary point. Now, in addition to monotone inclusion that we have just defined, another standard way of uh, abstracting away min-max optimization problems is through the lens of variational inequalities. Uh, there are two types of solutions that uh, one considers in, in this setting, those known as weak solutions and those known as the strong solutions. Here in the definition, the only difference is uh, in terms of the point at which we evaluate f. Uh, for weak solutions, it is an arbitrary u from the set. For strong solutions, it is u star, which would be the uh, optimal solution. Now, a standard and well-known fact is that uh, when f is monotone, which is the case for all problems considered uh, in this work, then there is no difference between solutions to monotone inclusion or weak and strong solutions to variation and inequalities. All of them are equivalent. However, once we start talking about approximate or computable solutions, there is a very big difference. And now let me first tell you what uh, approximate solution means. So here we uh, fix some target error epsilon, which would be some small non-negative number. And for monotone inclusion, this means that on the right-hand side, we add a goal of radius epsilon. In the unconstrained setup, this would mean that we allow uh, this uh, vector f at point u star epsilon to be at most epsilon. And similarly, we can define approximate solutions uh, for weak and strong variational inequalities. And the way we do that is uh, by replacing the zero on the right-hand side by the small epsilon. Now, here the situation becomes quite interesting because, first of all, if our problem is unconstrained, meaning if the feasible set U is unbounded, approximating either weak or strong solutions to variational inequalities makes absolutely no sense at all. What I mean by that is that there exist problems, and actually very simple ones, uh, where f is monotone, 
But unless we have an optimal solution for which we would get uh, epsilon equal to zero, the only epsilon we can hope for would be infinity. So th there is no uh, reasonable notion of epsilon approximation to these problems. Note that it, in this case, approximate monotone inclusion is still well defined. We can still find epsilon approximate solutions for arbitrary small uh, but non-zero epsilon. For constraint setups, where uh, we have that this diameter d of the set is bounded, we have the following picture. The set of epsilon approximate weak VI solutions contains the set of epsilon approximate strong VI solutions, which in turn contains the set of epsilon over d approximate solutions to monotone inclusion. This means that in a sense, monotone inclusion is the most general problem because uh, once we approximate monotone inclusion, we immediately have approximations also to weak and strong solutions for, of the variational inequalities. This is the primary reason why we are considering monotone inclusion in this work. And uh, as a byproduct of our results, we will also get guarantees for strong and weak VI solutions. Now, to talk about the results, I need to define the problem classes that we consider. And uh, we define the problem classes by making different assumptions about this operator f. The first such assumption is that f is 1 over L co-coercive. And uh, what this means is that this inner product that was uh, defining monotonicity of the operator is now bounded below by the squared distance between f of u and f of v times a constant. A slightly weaker assumption would be that uh, f is a Lipschitz, which is defined in the standard way. The third class that we will consider would be when f is not only a Lipschitz, but also m coercive or m strongly monotone. Uh, what this means is that the inner product we saw before is now bounded below by a constant times the distance between u and v squared. Uh, by the way, whenever I show you norms in this talk, uh, you should think about L2 norms. So this is for Euclidean spaces. We are interested here in a particular class of methods that are known as parameter-free. And what that means is that the method needs to work without knowing the value of either of these parameters, either L or M. Here is one big table that compares uh, our results to the best known from the existing work. Before I go over those, uh, let me just uh, tell you how to read this. So there are three big columns here corresponding to three different problem classes that were introduced in the previous slide. Each one of them has three sub-columns and that corresponds to uh, the guarantees for approximating weak VI solutions, strong VI solutions, and monotone inclusion. All of our results are optimal up to log factors. This means that uh, the convergence bounds you, you'll see, which is the number of iterations until you reach the error epsilon, is off by at most a log factor. And uh, all of them are parameter. For the best known results, only these cells that are shown in green are parameter free. All of these pink cells are not parameter free. So as you can see, uh, there exist uh, parameter free methods only for weak VI solutions and only for the first two problem classes. Now for the first problem class, um, our results are as good as the best known and uh, we expect that this is unimprovable, even though our lower bound uh, says this is uh, uh, optimal up to log factor. Uh, but we get parameter free methods even for strong VI uh, and for monotone inclusion. When F is Lipschitz, uh, there exist uh, results that are similar to ours. Again, here we are off by log factor. Uh, but only here for the weak VI solution uh, do the existing results match what we have. Already for a strong VI solutions and for monotone inclusion, not only 
are the existing results not parameter free, but they're also worse by quadratic factors in the diameter of the set D, in D0, which is the initial distance to the optimum, and in the target error epsilon. For Lipschitz and strongly monotone operators, here our results are off by a factor log L over M from the best known. This is what all field hides, but unlike any of the existing results, our results are parameter free. The way we get these results is uh, through the use of something known as the Halpern iteration. This is a well-known iteration used for solving fixed point equations of non-expansive maps. So non-expansive maps are just one Lipschitz maps. These are very well studied in the literature. Uh, and there is a recent result due to leader that shows that iteration like this converges at rate one over k. Uh, leader obtained this result using the very powerful PEP framework of Jory and Rule. Uh, however, what is unfortunate about the use of this framework is that it is uh, computer assisted and it results in analysis that are typically unintuitive and not very easy to generalize to other settings. Now, the reason that uh, looking at uh, non-expansive maps is useful here is that, in a sense, they're equivalent to co-coercive maps. We can construct non-expansive maps from co-coercive maps and the other way around. So if we wanted to uh, apply help penetration, we could do it in this way. And now we could get 1 over k convergence for this help penetration, just applying the results of leader. However, this would require us to know L, and as I said before, we want methods that are parameter free. So what we do here to get the parameter free method is we introduce a new analysis of this method. Our analysis is based on a new potential function that we introduced as shown on the slide, where here LK is our current guess iteration K for, for the co-coercivity parameter, and lambda K is the step size. The way that the analysis works is by arguing that this CK is non-positive for all K, because then, just by rearranging CK less than or equal to zero, we get the following. What we do is add and subtract u star on the right-hand side. The second expression here is non-positive by u star solving this problem, actually by it being a weak solution. And uh, then it remains to apply Cauchy-Schwartz and divide both sides by the norm of f of uk. What we get in the end looks like this. So to get one over k convergence, it remains just to argue that uh, our estimate LK is not too bad and that the step size lambda K uh, grows as uh, order one over K. We also extend this analysis to other setups, such as uh, constraint optimization. Uh, we also extend it to the setups with monotone electric operators or second class. This uh, actually requires the analysis to be able to work with inexact evaluations of these monotone operators. Uh, we also extend these results to setups with strongly monotone Lipschitz operators by using adaptive restart. And finally, we certify near optimality of all the results by using um, lower bound reductions between a known lower bound for min max optimization due to Young and Su and the uh, different pro problem classes that we considered here. One very strong reason why I think our community should give much more attention to Halpern iteration is that it is an implicitly regularized method, which means that uh, if the solution is non-unique, then the method always converges to the point that is closest to the initial point. If, uh, particularly if we started from zero, we would get a solution with the minimum norm. This is illustrated in the examples shown on the slide, where the pink rectangle is the uh, set of all solutions. So to summarize, uh, we obtain near optimal and parameter free methods for all basic variants of VI problems and monotone inclusion problems with Lipschitz operators. Uh, for minimax optimization, this means we get guarantees for both the finality gap and the gradient norm. And uh, these results are for the last digit when we did an implicitly regularized method. Some open questions are to close the log squared gap between upper and lower bounds and to extend these results to non-Euclidean norms. 
thank you very much for your attention and please reach out to me with any comments or questions.